Good morning, Lance here. Look, we've talked a lot about movement today, but the one area that I haven't mentioned, which is the powerhouse, is the powerhouse of your whole body. That's your hips and waist area. That's the area which generates more power than you can do with any other individual part of your body. And yet 90% of us don't use it. So I'm just going to show you before I ask uh, one of the girls to come in, which is always an unfortunate business, but I have to bring them in because I've got no one else here. And my wife will not do it. However, so I'm going to show you what people do and then I'll show you what they shouldn't do. So let's assume for a minute, let's assume for, uh, that a person's punching. Now, you, if I punched, boom, like that, I'm using just my arm and shoulder. If I punch like that, I'm using the whole of my body weight, which is kind of it. If I'm in golf, for example, and I come down and I do that, I'm using my shoulders. If, on the other hand, I come through, I'm using the power of my body. Even with tennis, the same thing applies. So coming down to what I'm saying at the moment, I'm going to show you that you must get that particular area working into prime condition. You must get your brain to acknowledge the fact that that's the area that moves first. It's common sense in any physiology or anatomy class. It's the big part of your body moves first. So in other words, if I was going to hit something, my waist would start, then my shoulder would start, then my arm would start, and the last would be my wrist, which would flick. So it's always the big part that starts, so it, but you start with your powerhouse. Right. So having got that into you, we're going to now show you uh, what, what, what is required. Now, it's, it's uh, Catherine. So you, if you can change, change that. Right. So if you can bring your chair across there, Catherine. I, I had to recruit the other daughter who, who was getting, putting on weight enormously. <laughs> so I thought, uh, <laughs> so I might as well kill two birds with one stone. This is Catherine, by the way, right, so sit up straight, uh, 70 feet flat on the floor, and that's it. Now, why am I using a chair? A chair for all people, that's rubbish. Chairs because I'm locking her hips and getting her to understand how the body moved with locked hips so she's not using any other part of it to pull it around. Now, what she's got to do is this. She's got to pretend she's got a ball in front of her, in front of her. Now, if she makes a mistake, please forgive her, it's driving me mad. So, she'll hold it there, now, I'm going to get her to turn, but she's not going to turn her shoulders. She's going to turn from the waist. To the left. Pull with the waist. Keep turning till you can't pull anymore. Keep turning, keep turning. Now, from there, she, that's as far as she can go with the pull. Now, I want her to take her shoulders further back. The left shoulder round. Round. Now, see, she's come almost, not quite. But you notice something, which you can't possibly see from there, that the body's leaning slightly backwards. Now that's indicating that these muscles are too tight. And, and as she's turning, they're shortening and they're pulling her back. Now you must watch for that. Now once she gets to that position where this is facing power, she must release her head because the neck locks. So just move your head to the right and left, keep your body where it is. Right. And then she comes back slowly. No, not your shoulders, the waist first. The waist, that's it. You get the idea? Well, if you don't, you need to go and see somebody to explain it to you. So, once again, we do the other side. This is so important, I'm taking a bit of time with it. So slowly, no, with the waist first. Pull the waist, that's it. You'll see the difference. Now, she can only pull that far with the waist because she's got weak uh, uh, obliques. And now use your shoulder, <laughs> and shoulder and she just pull around. Now see, that side of her body, on this side, is, is reasonably upright. So the other side is tight. Now once she's got there, she loses the head again. And then she comes back. Ah, she remembered, she remembered. See, she came with her, right, over, relax. Now, that will give your obliques a chance of tightening. Your abdominals start moving and pulling your body around without the help of anything else. So you're purely using your internal, external obliques. The other one is, put your right hand up, above your head like that. Now, now just bend it. Leave it relaxed. Never stretch the, uh, the thing until the last moment. That's the extremity. 
Now I want you to bend from the waist that way. Just sideways, sideways, sideways. Except go over, pause you can, pause you can, pause you can. Now, when she can't go any further, that hand must go slowly and stretch out towards the opposite wall. And you feel the pulls coming on the arm. Right? Can you feel any pull? Yep. It's reached her brain. Right, the neurons, <laughs> the neurons, <laughs> the neurons have opened up. Now, before you come back, this is important. Don't try and pull your body back. You just lighten it. Bend the arm back. See? Now come up. Right, so having explained that to you so far, I hope you've grasped the principle of it. Uh, the other side the same, go over as far as you can. Once she reaches as far as she can, then the arm straightens and pulls. See? Notice the wrist bent backwards because the flexion, that's it. And then the arm comes back first, and then the body comes back. Do you get what I mean? Right. Uh, have we got time to continue with this or not? Six or minutes. Huh? Six. Take a sec. Well, I think we'll have to continue in the next video, really. It'll get too long. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Lance here.